and welcome back to your online home learning. I'm here to join you again this morning for some more maths learning. So I'll share my screen and we'll get going. OK, so hopefully you can see what I can see. So on the screen now, hopefully you can see this pictogram. Now this pictogram is showing favourite colours in class two. Now each circle represents two children. I want to know how many children liked blue the best? How many children liked blue the most? OK, pause the video here just to have a little look and a count of how many children liked blue. We'll go through the answer in a moment. OK, so five children liked blue the most because we can see there are two circles which both represent two and then half a circle which represents one. OK, well done, everybody. So let's think back to our learning from last lesson. What were we learning to do in our last lesson? OK, so we introduced ourselves to something called a block diagram. And yesterday you were learning to make block diagrams. OK, so just before we think about our learning for today, we're going to remind ourselves of what a block diagram is. So a block diagram is a simple chart which displays units of data with blocks. Block diagrams have two axes and are a common method of recording information in maths. So today we are going to be learning to draw our own block diagrams. So let's think about some things we need to remember when drawing a block diagram. Now, some of these things were things I reminded you yesterday that we need to make sure we're including or drawing when drawing a block diagram. OK, use this example on the screen to help you to think about what you need to include when drawing a block diagram. OK, so some things you need to include a block diagram must all a block a uh, graph must always have a title explaining what it shows blocks must be carefully drawn to show the data there must be no gap between each bar so as you can see here each bar is directly next to each other and each bar must be the same width so that means all of the blocks need to be the same size we don't want one bar being really really wide and another bar being really narrow. OK, so those are just four things to remember when drawing our block diagram or block graph. OK, so we've got a tally chart of information here and we're going to use this information to draw your block diagram. So class one are collecting data about the number of pets they have. I want you to use this information to draw your block diagram. Now you can just draw this on a piece of paper that you have at home. So remember to draw your two axes. Remember to label your axes and then draw those blocks, one block to represent each, um, each um, animal there. OK, now as your challenge X, I want you to have a go at drawing the same block diagram. But this time I wonder if you can represent each block so that each block is worth two rather than one okay so for example for the cat you have six so that would mean you'd only need three blocks two four six so three blocks to represent those six cats okay so have a little go at drawing a block diagram to represent the data in the tally chart where each block represents one animal and then have a go at drawing another where each block represents two animals. OK, so let's have a look at these examples together then. We have got our two block diagrams here. The first one on the left hand side is the one we're going to look at to start with. So we can see here our scale is going up in ones, so each block is worth one animal. OK, and we can see our blocks are close together. There's no gap in between each bar. OK, we can see our axes are labelled. OK, when we move across to our challenge X block diagram, which is exactly the same, 
but our scale is different. So this time it's counting up in twos rather than counting up in ones. OK, and we can see the multiples of two down the side there. OK, and my title is a block diagram to show the number of pets in class one. You may have a different title to me, but that's absolutely OK. OK, so there's another block diagram I'd like you to try and complete now. And this one is all about holidays to different countries. And the first thing I want you to look at is I want you to notice the scale. I want you to look at what is each block worth, OK? And I also want to know what could the title of this block diagram be? OK, so I'd like you to just pause the video here and take your time to draw out this block diagram just like this. Don't worry about all the lines in the centre and then draw your blocks to represent the number of people going to each of these countries. OK, so let's have a look at this one together then. So we have our block diagram here counting up in five. So each block is worth five. And we can see here the UK, there was 35 people that went there, 20 people that went to France, five to Italy and 15 to Spain. And my title would be a block diagram to show the number of people traveling to each country. The only thing that's missing here is the axes have not been labelled, so we don't know. So we may write at the bottom here holiday and along the side number, just so we know what each axis is representing. OK, the last one then before we move on to our practice. We've got it the other way around now. So this block diagram has been completed, but the table is missing some information. So we need to complete the table to match the block diagram. The first thing we need to look at is we need to know what each block is worth to help us complete this key. It says one block equals blank children. So have a good look now at the block, looking at the scale. What is each block worth? OK, so each block is worth 10 children and you need to know that to help you to complete this table here. And then finally, I want you to know I want to know what the title of this pictogram could be. So if we look over here, we have the number of children and we have food. So what could the title of this be? Now, if you want to stretch yourself a little bit further, there is a challenge X to write one question to ask about this block diagram. This may be a question you want to write down and then ask a member of your family to answer, or you may want to answer it yourself. OK, so I just want to see these numbers in this table filled in. So the number of children that chose pie, curry, fish and pasta. OK, pause the video now to complete this table and we'll go through the answers in a moment. OK, so there were 10 children that chose pie, 40 that chose curry, 50 for fish and 30 for pasta. And my title is a block diagram to show what each child had for lunch. And my challenge X question is, which was the most popular lunch option? So have a little look at those lunch options now. Have a look at the block diagram. Which of those options was the most popular? OK, so the most popular lunch option was the fish. And we can clearly see that by looking at the bars, the fish bar is the highest one. OK, so looking at our practice then, we have got another table with some information in. So we've been given the names and we've got their score. So what do you think this data is showing? So I want you to use the data in this table to draw your own block diagram. And I want you to have a think about what each block will be worth. Have a really good look at these numbers and think about, are they multiples of any of those times tables we've learnt about? And if they are, then that would be a good place to start. That would tell you what each block needs to be worth. You can go up in one, so each block representing one, but your uh, block diagram would be very, very tall. So try to choose another number which each block can be worth. When you've decided that, uh, you need to write your title for your block diagram. 
label the axes and then draw your blocks of equal size. Remember, if you have a ruler at home, then please make sure you're using your ruler to draw your block diagram. OK, now I'm going to show you the block diagram now and I've completed it on a piece of squared paper. This is because one of the resources I'm going to put for you onto Teams is I'm going to attach a uh, document with some squared paper in it if you would like to print that off to help you draw your block diagrams. There is also a sheet which I will upload for you, which has got the block diagrams created for you and you just need to fill in the boxes. So it's up to you whether you would like to find draw them yourself or whether you'd like a little bit more support with it. So as you can see the table here and I've drawn my block diagram. So my title is a block diagram to show the number of football goals scored. So I thought this data might be showing the number of football goals. You may have thought it was showing something different. So I've added in the names along the bottom along this axis and then hopefully you were able to work this one out that we needed to count in twos. Each block should be worth two. And that's because each of these numbers here, each of these scores, they are all multiples of two. Because remember, the multiples of two end in two, four, six, eight, and zero. And all of these numbers follow that pattern. Okay, so I've completed my blocks, making sure they're all the same size and there's no gaps in between them. Okay, so your challenge for today then. You are going to draw two block diagrams. Now, this tally chart and this pictogram you have seen before. You saw it in your lesson yesterday. And both of them, you had to go at making block diagrams using this data. So today, we're going to be using this data to draw block diagrams. So one to represent the tally chart and one to represent the pictogram. Now, for the tally chart, each block is going to represent one item. So a little bit of an easier one to get you started. And then for the pictogram, each block in the second pictogram must represent two, just like the key. So for the leopard, you will need to draw three blocks, OK, because every paw print represents two and every block on your block diagram represents two. OK. So that is what I'd like you to do for your challenge. Let's have a look at your challenge X. So you've got two children saying different statements about this block diagram here. So just have a look at the block diagram yourself for a moment. Have a look at what each block is worth. So Lauren says six more ice creams were sold on Sunday than on Thursday. And Zach says, in total, six ice creams were sold on Thursday and Friday. OK, so they're both saying something a little different. And you need to tell me who is correct and explain why. OK, so who is correct and explain why? So we'll go through the answer together then. So Lauren is correct because there are three more blocks coloured for Sunday than Thursday, and we know that three multiplied by two equals six. So three blocks that are each worth two totals six. And Zach is wrong because he thinks that each block represents one sale, but actually each block represents two sales. OK, so well done if you notice that. Finally then for your fluency number sentence. 28 divided by 2. So this is the same as finding half of 28. You may want to draw two sharing circles and share 28 between them, or you may want to draw 28 by grouping it into groups of two. OK, so have a go at answering this number sentence and we'll go through the answer together in a moment. OK, so 28 divided by 2 equals 14. Well done if that was the answer that you found. OK, well, thank you so much for joining me this morning, Yeti, for another super maths lesson together. 
I hope you enjoy completing your task of drawing your own block diagrams. I hope you continue to have a really wonderful day. Bye bye for now.